Can I get a carne asada burrito with no no avocado? You said no avocado? Yeah. Okay. And that'll be it. Don't tell me it's gonna be good. I know it's gonna be shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's freaking real good. I didn't even want to order the chicken because I was so scared. This place looks like it's got a sea. How, um, how fresh is their chicken? Is it frozen and they microwave it? They killed the freaking bird this morning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Burrito in hand. Dude, he called you brother. Yeah, I get that a lot. <laughs> Stupid. Go right, right here. I really fit in with these guys. Mexicans. What is up guys, Flossy Missiles here. In today's video, we'll be working on Adam's van. So we are going to try to repair this rust area right here. We'll see how bad it is. Also, we have some rust on the other side. Right here, this one doesn't look as bad. Can't tell if it's all the way through or not. But the only way to find out is we're gonna pull out this windshield. So we're gonna cut the seal out and um, get a better look at it. And pretty soon we'll be cutting, grinding, and throwing some Bondo on this thing. Just had to make a quick pit stop over at Ace Hardware and we picked up this knife. It's, like <laughs> a, it's a carpet knife that I just threw down. He's not flowing with the video today. But um, basically you run it right behind the rubber. Yeah, I'll put this back down. Like this. You run it right behind here and then it just pulls back and you can see where the glass ends and where the rubber still is at. And so honestly you have to pull the blade towards you when you're doing this. But Adam's going to go ahead and finish off the rest of the window. Just that little bit right there. But... Yes, come along good. Next level. Windshield is out and the rust is not looking too hot. This one we kind of didn't know because it's just a little bit showing, but upon further inspection, I mean, look at this. You can see it with that harsh lighting. It's it's pretty bad. It almost ate all the way through the first layer where the two pieces of metal were like uh, seam welded together. Also rust along on this whole channel on the bottom down here. But the major rust is over here, of course. That pretty much looks the same from the outside. It's just a bummer kind of finding all the rust along here. Like this is all eaten up right here. And so we'll vacuum this all out and get a better look at it. Yeah, that thing sucks. <laughs> so it's been about a month since the last clip you saw. I've actually had a really hard time finding uh, replacement sheet metal for Vanagans. It's actually easier to find air-cooled stuff because they make reproduction, but they don't make any reproduction Vanagans stuff that I've been able to find. But this one just popped up at the Monrovia pick apart and so I came down here it's already pretty picked over too but it's got the metal that we need right here and over here it looks pretty good so I think it's gonna be a winner but I gotta go ahead and pop this windshield out and you know start making some lines and cutting some stuff I just brought my backpack with my cordless sawzall and some knives and some hearing protection but man I'm so stoked to find this I was getting kind of worried because literally like for a month I've been emailing people and doing that whole thing and no one's no one's had the stuff, but here it is. I just got the windshield popped out of this thing. As you can see, there's all kinds of mud and water, <laughs> moisture, and the areas where uh, Adam's rusted. This one's not rusted at all, but there's a lot of crap in there. So I can see why that area would rust. Okay, right now I'm sick to my stomach. This is so disgusting. I don't even think I should show this, but I was like, man, this van really stinks. Like, it's horrible smelling van. And I had to get inside to push out the windshield and all that stuff. And then I look behind me and this is, this is so gross. I don't know if you can see that right there. Some dude or somebody <laughs> dropped a huge deuce in there. It's like so disgusting. So I'm like in a rush now to try to get this pulled out and metal cut. It's been about an hour of me cutting now and the piece is finally off. Here it is. I smell that stinky smell, but but bam there's the piece oh my gosh it was honestly a lot of work to cut the thing out like uh sawzalls are rough but it's out i'm so stoked to finally have the thing out uh man i'm so happy i don't have to smell that smell anymore it smells so terrible over here and we're back home so i just went ahead and busted out the dremel and i cut right here all the way down it's crazy there's like a tension on there's like tension on the metal so when you cut it it just automatically comes like loose kind of springs out of place type of thing but uh as you can see these little spot welds um let's see okay, this one's pretty visible right here but yeah uh the best way to get those out to drill that out those panels out 
is using a fingertip grinder or uh, whatever they call them, portable um, belt sanders, something like that. I'm not sure, I always forget the name. But I might have to drop this dash. I'm not looking forward to that at all because dropping van dashes is not fun. It's kind of like a couple hour ordeal. But we'll see what, what, if it, you know, if it's, if, it, if we do it or not. Anyways, um, this black line right here is from when I was sending pictures to people because I wanted people to cut, like, I found people in the Samba that were parting out vanigans, like, I was trying to show them where to cut, but that's obviously too much, so the purple line is what I just did right now. That's where I'm going to be cutting and trying to get all this new metal in there. A lot of work, but it's doable. We'll get it done. So about $20 in Dremel blades later, everything is all cut out. It's not prepped yet. I kind of farmed it a little bit there, but I can fix that. Um, but yeah, everything is cut out. I gotta clean this all up, of course, and get it weld ready, but all the structural stuff's good. And here's the thing, this is kind of ghetto, but I know my buddy Adam doesn't care. And it's better than me spending another day and a half trying to pull this dash. So I went ahead, because the dashboard's metal, and he has a cover for it anyways that goes over it. But uh, I just folded it up. And so I get all the, you know, down to good metal. You can see all it's all good. I cut out all the rusty stuff and I'll still have some room to get in there. And then when it's all set and done, I just fold this back down and throw, a, and there's a couple screws that already go in it. See the holes right there. So it'll sit flush again anyways. And um, probably just throw a few dabs of brown paint and spots that got scuffed up or whatever. So that worked out good. But as you can see, all these holes are cut. No turning back now. Here's the other side. And yeah, we're gonna be good to go. I gotta go to the store really quick and get some weld through primer and um, some pour 15, a few other little random things to go ahead and start moving forward with this, but everything's turning out great. Just made it back from the store and I picked up some of this Loctite uh, Extend Rust Neutralizer. Converts rust into a paintable surface. So I'm gonna go ahead and give that a try on some of the spots that are, um, I mean, I don't even know. Yeah, some of the spots that are kind of harder to get to, but everything's pretty much, gotten already I, I weld prepped all of this area sorry for the white balance is off right now on this thing but you can see it's fully weld prepped right here uh i'll fix a little area right here too um all weld prepped right here but i'll still hit it with that rust neutralizer in a spots where i think water is going to collect or that type of thing that's just like little surfacey stuff i can get that off real quick but i was lucky enough to even find a paint color that's super close so I went to AutoZone first and they had like this Toyota Sandstorm color or something like that. And it was pretty close, but it wasn't like, I don't know, it wasn't that close. But I went to Home Depot, they had this Rust-Oleum Universal Metallic Paint and Primer and Warm. What's the name of the color? Boom, Metallic Champagne Mist for the Champagne Dream. And you can tell that is pretty close. If it really does match that can, uh, the cap I mean then this thing is going to be like pretty spot on. I've also done a little work on the donor panel that I have. This thing's been painted like three or four times. It's crazy. The paint was really thick on here. But I went ahead and I started cleaning the paint off this. I figured it'd be easier to clean the paint off now instead of when it's on the, when I'm trying to like cut it out and it's a little tiny piece and I'm like trying to hold and sand a little piece. I'd rather, rather do it with a, with a giant piece. But anyways, you can see I cut, cut out some spot welds. And it's funny because I never usually like that spot, that spot weld uh, cutting tool. And this thing's having such a hard time focusing today. But I usually don't like that, this, I'll show you the tool. Where is it? Oh, right here. Focus, baby. Come on, be there. Okay, now we're in focus. So this is the tool. Um, this is spring loader right here, this end piece. And you put it right up against the spot weld and these teeth, just go ahead and drill right through it. You can use one of these guys, which is like a little center punch tool. It has a spring inside of it, so when you push it down on something, it uh, leaves a little mark. And so it has something for that little uh, spring-loaded piece to ride in. And here's the other side of that piece with the spot welds cut out. So what you do is you get this thing and you push it right in the middle and it leaves a little mark. And then this guy comes in and uh, just chews all the metal out around it so the spot weld is essentially cut off. Um, it's getting pretty dark right now, I don't know if you guys can tell. But uh, sun's going down, it's almost over the mountain. So I'm probably going to wrap it up right now and I'll pick it up tomorrow morning 
So you guys will uh, see me then. Here is the first piece uh, cut out. Got to grind it down a little more and uh, get it all prepped. But it's going to be a ton of trimming obviously involved getting this to fit 100% exactly because there's like a weird body line uh, in that spot. Fits in there, right there. So yeah, I'm pretty much ready to throw some welds on it and uh, get it finalized. But yeah, this one piece took quite a long time. I'll show you guys the fitment. Fitment's pretty good though. Anyways, yeah. So it fits right in there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and throw some tacks on it. I'm gonna hit like all corners and then, you know, make sure everything's flat and then finalize it. And it takes forever. Also, that rust neutralizer stuff. I put it on some of this metal. This like had like very light rust on it, and it turned it black. It's really strange. Straight up black. Really interesting. <laughs> threw this welding curtain over the front so I don't burn down his bus, but I went ahead and just threw some weld around it and grounded it down, as you can see. Uh, I got a few little areas I gotta fix right here at the welder, but once one piece of metal again. Um, yeah, of course I'm going to glaze this because there is a little bit of a ripple in some places because, uh, you know, the metal shrinks and stuff. When you start welding on it, it starts getting hot. But body lines came out super dialed. Um, it's actually a really good fit. But like I said, yeah, I got to glaze this. I got to fix this with the welder too. I'm going to get some more metal in there. But all the holes are filled. So now I'm working on the passenger side. I got this thing really close. The gaps are pretty tight. Lines up good. Body lines are lined up nice. So let's say I'm gonna weld this one in. I don't know how much further I'm gonna get tonight because I still have to weld in these two bottom ones. Actually, there's three bottom ones. There's this ginormous one, one in the middle, and then this one right here. So those ones should be easier because there's no like crazy creases or body line. The hard part, this is like, uh, it's hard to tell, but okay. So from starting up here, there's like a, uh, around a core like a squared off edge and it gets bigger and bigger as it goes down down and so it gets bigger and bigger and it splits off oh sorry <laughs> it's bigger and bigger and then it splits off right here and does this weird thing so line everything up and we start welding this thing it's such a little piece of metal it wants to warp so it gets a little difficult a few hot tacks holding this thing in but the fitment on it is insane look at that look at these body lines this is going a lot smoother than the and the driver's side did, but you know the second one always does. Uh, I'm gonna fully weld this obviously, but I'm just trying to go slow because I do not want any warpage. So here's the passenger side. Uh, I gotta grind all that down, but that's what it looks like with the weld going all the way around it. Me pushing away that welder is a good sign. I'm so happy to be done welding on this thing. Uh, here is what we look like right now. So, see it looks pretty good. I'm still gonna glaze it. But both sides are looking good. The body line on it is looking great all the way around. I also got all this new metal in right here. All this new metal in right here and right here. I didn't film it. Just because it's a lot of cutting and trimming, cutting and trimming, cutting and trimming, cutting and trimming. And you guys don't want to see that. It's, I'm, I, they're really easy pieces to make. Or to even, you know, cut off and redo. But it's just time consuming as a thing. So yeah, all new metal up here. And we're ready to go, dude. Throw some glaze on this thing. And looking great. Yeah, I'm stoked the way it came out, honestly. Dialed. I just spent a little bit of time thoroughly cleaning everything with this acetone and I taped it off with some blue painters tape so when I glaze it the glaze just isn't getting everywhere and cause a big mess. So here's with two coats of glaze on it. I also forgot to mention in the last clip when you uh, put the tape around it you know block off your bondo. Uh, pull the tape right when the bondo is still wet you don't want to leave it on there at all. But yeah like I said here's two coats. Uh, it's pretty flat. It's pretty straight honestly. Some of these curves are a little weird, but yeah, I got it pretty good. It's getting dark, so I got the work light out. That's why it, the lighting's really crazy right now. <laughs> it looks super bright. But um, yeah, like I said, everything's pretty flat. Um, there's still a few random pinholes that I'm gonna have to go back and get, but I think I'm gonna throw some self-etching primer on it just for tonight, because like I said, it's getting dark. To kind of protect the metal, it's been really dewy in the mornings. 
a lot of moisture in the air and I don't want this stuff rusting with this Bondo on here but yeah it looks so good and it kind of it kind of does look like there's a lot of Bondo but there's really not that's like the thinnest little skim coat on there two little th thin skim coats most of it got sanded off so there's there's not much on there that's probably the like the thickness of like a business card if that <laughs> So the primer's on it right now. I'm gonna let it dry throughout the night and then tomorrow we'll spray with that champagne color. So the primer dried overnight and here it is now. I just hit it with some 220 and it is ready for paint. Look at that. That looks good. And that get good. So yeah, I just got hit with paint and I gotta mask it all off again. <laughs> and we should be ready to rip all masked off and ready for some paint. Hopefully this color matches. It looks close, champagne mist. Hope you don't do me dirty. Um, I also tried to fold the tape over on a lot of edges, give it a softer edge. So the transition's not as rough, but we'll see how it turns out. And the van is sprayed. Check out that color match. Pretty dial. I feathered it in a little bit more and I pulled off the tape and stuff. But there's the final look of it. Came out so good. Uh, yeah, champagne mist is the key for this for this color van. That's where I'm gonna wrap it up for today. I actually did put a windshield in it and I put a new Go Westy seal around the windshield, but for some reason my memory card or my camera is not working right. I had some some malfunction, but this camera's been giving me a lot of problems because it's uh, old. Actually, a lot of screws are falling out of it, as weird as that sounds. I keep like finding random holes where like, screws were supposed to be. But like I said, that's where I'm wrapped up for today's video. If you like today's video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more car content. This week I should be uh, working on this thing a lot more. I haven't worked on it seriously since I got it basically but i ordered a bunch of parts for it so we should be getting that thing taken care of i hope this video gave you guys some more confidence to do some some body work some metal work if you're a little bit afraid you know just take your time measure things out and uh i don't know it, it, it usually works out i mean you'd be surprised what you're capable of but anyways like i said if you like this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more car content thank you so much for watching